one to two lines. So definition of IMS. What is an IMS? The IMS is or the inertial reference system is a self-contained navigation aid that uses accelerometers D C C E A L E or you send a real bit goes a move to ERS accelerometers and Zydos to calculate the position orientation and velocity of the aircraft it senses the acceleration and integrating big twice we gauge the distance hangs position of aircraft. So in short, I can see IMAs or inertial navigation is a navigation aid which uses accelerometers and zyvos to continuously calculate the position orientation and velocity of an aircraft it senses the accelerometer integrating it twice we get the distance hence we can calculate the position of the aircraft so what are the components of is i uh, of a ins the ins system has you can see here actually here we have three accelerometers sorry collection we have three zyros okay three zyros one is in the vertical and two are in the horizontal and we have two accelerometers which is 90 degree to each other now as we know we know the present position when the aircraft is at the bay or at the gate in an airport we know the position of the aircraft now when the aircraft moves the xylos calculates it can calculate the acceleration acceleration if we introduce each once we that means we multiply by time once we get the speed in meter per second let's say if we multiply it again that means we introduce it again with time we get make in makers that means we get the distance now if this is my i have a coordinate over here let's say x x x coordinate and if i move to this distance let's say 30 nautical mine i can get the coordinate of the next position y by y so this is the principle of ILS so as we explained the accelerometers are mounted in the heart of the inertial navigation system this acceleration measures the device senses and it changes the aircraft's velocity either in acceleration or in deceleration the accelerometer is basically a pendulous device when the aircraft accelerates the pendulum due to inertia shrinks 
off to the null position. What is an accelerometer? The examiner can ask you. The accelerometer is a pendulous device where the pendulous is an eye bar magnet which is connected, I mean, to an e bar and the other electrical peak of computers. Now, when the aircraft moves, this pendulous structure, because of the deceleration, because of the inertia, it moves back. So it comes like this, it moves back. So the space between this peak of devices in one section, it is deduces and the other section increases. Now the change in current in the peak of devices, the change in computer peak of devices, the change in current, current is measured and the value of acceleration is calculated, calculated in the computer, in the computer. So this is the accelerometer. How does this accelerometer work? So as we have seen, uh, it gives a grip a good distance. So we have this accelerometer in the north and south, an accelerometer in the east and west, west direction. Now the next question that can be asked, how do you align the INS? How do you align the INS? The INS alignment uh, starts in three to four phases. Number one is warm up. Warm up. So at the first flight of the day or when the aircraft is uh, stationary, so we start the warm-up period. The first stage in any alignment sequence is to bring the fluid field components to the correct operating temperature. So we have fluids over here. Those fluid field components has to bring to the correct temperature. This phase normally takes three to four minutes. So remember, the aircraft can be parked at a temperature of, let's say, minus 10 degree or maybe 55 degree, plus 55 degree, too hot or too cold. So the fluid has to be to the correct temperature. Then comes course alignment. Close alignment. What is close alignment? The platform is roughly le leveled and aligned in azimuth, that means the horizontal, and moves zero and alignment errors and cuts the time to a minimum. So it removes the zero alignment errors by keeping it to the horizontal plane. Then comes course leveling. Pitch and roll driven until they are 90 degree to each other. The platform is then roughly leveled using either the aircraft frame as the reference using the outputs from gravity switches or the horizontal accelerometers. And finally comes the fine leveling with zero output from the accelerometers, fine leveling is achieved. Zero output from accelerometers.
is not that means moving. the aircraft is come so then the fine learning comes and this takes up to 1 to 1.1 1 .1 and a half minutes okay so this is how this zero alignment starts or happens so we can say i miss is aligned in allied mode by entering the coordinates at arc at the location and moving the switches to align mode. This will sense of the rotation and align the xylos with the local meridian. But during this process, aircraft velocity must be zero so that xylos can only sense of the rotation and apply correction for great. Quick aligned. is also appropriate in nav mode which takes only one to two minutes in which it uses location and in the past location it uses its last location of the uh, airplane when it has stopped and generally it takes one to two minutes so this is quick alignment the question kid comes how do you align the iness then comes what is side of compassing it will ask one more question what is either compassing the zyder compassing the platform can be aligned in azimuth by connecting the zyder normally used to stabilize the platform about an east-west axis to the azimuth symbol motor with the platform correctly aligned in azimuth the east zidal should not be subject to rotation of its input axis due to earth rotation when the platform is out of alignment the east zidal will detect a component of earth rotation and the resultant output signal can be used to troll the azimuth xylo until the stem table is aligned. Accelerometers must be leveled. Platform must be oriented to true north xylo compassing. Position is verified. So if you have time, you can just go through this. So these are the mold and the switches we have off and standby when we put the align mode then it senses and what we just studies the alignment happens and then we put it to nav mode and when it is ready it goes to ready nav so ready nav enhances it that means it is now forget to use and we have this slid battery warning flat when the battery is below minima. Now comes our next topic, which is IRS, inertial reference system. So inertial reference system is also a similar kind of the INS where the physical xylo and accelerometers are replaced by this. This is called a ring laser. Okay.
Al El Chi. This is a modern system, and you can see there are three Al El Chi in one uh, IRS device. So in the aircraft, you have such kind of three IRS devices: one Ku and three is just scanned by one. So the question that you give you when they ask you, how does the wing laser zyro works? How does the ring laser zyro work? Okay. So to understand this, let me show you an image. So how does it work? Laser, like amplification and similar get addition of radiation, that is the laser, Zydos major rotation by comparing two laser beams created and directed to rotate in opposite directions within a really narrow tunnel. We have seen the tunnel, these tunnels. Photons are emitted within the laser cavity in all directions, but only the light that radiates backwards and forwards between the meters is reinforced by the plastic creeps through the gain medium. Continued passage amplification soon research reaches situation uh, reaches circulation and the steady state Oscillation ensures a laser beam. This is the diagram of a ring laser zyro where we have prisms at three corners. You can see prism of mirrors at three corners. Okay. And we have this cathode and anode tube. We call a daily is this piezoelectric decal motor. D remember the names, these names are very important. We have piezoelectric, uh, piezoelectric decal motors. And inside is helium or neon gas. So from the cathode and anode, laser beams of sent here okay two laser beams of different directions so two laser beams of different directions are sent through this path by this cathode and anode so when the aircraft is stationary so there is no change of light when the as aircraft is accelerating there will be change of lights which in the computer can be cast form as the value of acceleration and then increasing it we will get velocity further into getting, we will get distance. So in the INA, IRS, the lean, uh, lean laser zyvo actually replaces the xylos and accelerometers of the previous device. Now, IL is the main of advantage of iron is is the platform in the iron is the platform is set in gimbals request three weight integrating xylos and accelerometers to achieve an output that we can use this process is started by ensuring that the platform is horizontal and the correct latitude so that is the uh, principle the of iron is laser gyro 
or rear extension serves an accelerometer directly in that aircraft chassis. That must it is connected, it is attached to the aircraft body. So it is more easy to install. So now we have to, uh, the and I can ask you a very really important question. What is the difference between INS and IRS? What is the difference between INS I and ILS? <laughs> so please take out your take your notebook and make notes. So first we will create a column like this and we will write INS and IRS. Okay. So write it on your notebook. Number one, INS is a xylo stabilized platform. Side is stabilized platform. ILS is scrap down platform. IRS is a strap down platform. This is number one. Number two. INS use conventional Zido. ILS use ring laser zygo. In ILS, zydos are mounted. Zylos are mounted on a pendulous platform pendulous platform in iris ring laser zydo are mounted on a platform which is strapped down, strapped down, which is strapped down with air curved structure, with air curved structure. So, number three, xylos are mounted in islands. Xylos are mounted on a pendulous platform. And in case of iris, ring laser zygo are mounted on a platform which is strapped on with the aircraft structure. So, IMS is less accurate this is more accurate the aligning time for INS is aligning time is about 20 minutes so, so much time 20 minutes in mid latitude mid latitude okay here the align time minutes reduce only 3 to 10 minutes only 
Also, it has a long life cycle. Okay, so what is the disadvantage? So this is the difference between an ILS and an ILS. The very important question, a very important interview question. It has in uh, yelling interview also. So you can write down if you have finished this or write it down. Four to five uh, points um, enough. Okay, so there is one ad uh, disadvantage in ILS pages, laser lock, laser lock, this study about laser lock and it then comment your answer, what is laser lock and what we have studied, okay, and to avoid this we use Dieter Moto, Beta Moto, Moto. So as we have seen, there is uh, something called Schauler, C-H-U-L-E-R, Schauler, damping. Okay. This is also a question. Look into New York and ask what is Schauler damping. So please write down the damping. Of the... Pendulum in the IMS platform. The damping of the pendulum in the ILS platform and accuracy of the ring. Laser Zorlo is strapped down it, it is checked in every 84.4 minutes called the Schauler Gamping. Okay. Okay. So these are main questions, important questions about INS and ILS. So remember the questions can be explain INS, okay, limitations, construction, gyros, these are the things. Explain ILS. What is the difference between INS and ILS? If you can practice four to five questions for minus and eyeless, as we have discussed, I think that will cover your ATPL variva and your line interview. Interview. Okay. So best of luck and follow a reated cloud. And check out our website www.
avhfcloud.com. Thank you.